So we have our last player type today, the uh, what the theorist. I wanted to say theoretic, but the theorist is the name of the last, player type. Last Bo Hansen coined it, and I want to stick with it. Mm -hmm. And it's, of course, it would be there is theoretician, yes, that's... theorist, or others. I want to stick with last Bo Hansen's thing. Theorist, it should be. I think that's fine. We have one theorist in the top 10 of the world at the moment. His name is, can you guess it at home? Anish Giri. And um, that, if you think about Anish, that makes a lot of sense. But you can go a bit deeper into the theorist now and explain to us why and how and who else was a theorist. From the world championships, mm. from the world champions, Steinitz, Botvinning and Kramnik. Mm -hmm. Other players, Tarash, Nemtsovic, Peter Leko, Arnish Giri, Georg Meyer, Ulf Anderson, Nikola Sedlak, Sergei Tivyakov, Ruslan Podomarev, Hans Berline, the correspondence chess version. His book is even called, I think, The System. Even, not my system, <laughs> The System. <laughs> There's this, only one truth. This can only be written by a theorist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Matthias Waltz. Victor Moskalenko, Mark Dvoretsky, Josef Dorfmann, mm. the method in chess. Ah, Josef see, Dorfmann, Alexander Bangiev, Felde, Strategie in German. Okay. These books can only be written by serious of. So that means Lars Bohansen himself, who made uh, like the 2005 version, he is a theorist too. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Lars Bohansen yes. definitely also is a theorist. And I guess that among chess trainers and authors, theorists are largely overrepresented because they want to pass on their series to their students or in their books or DVDs. Ah, and okay. as a coach or writer, I could also be seen as a theorist because I, I always like these series, these guidelines, these... As player, I'm definitely yeah. an activist. That's clear. We don't have to discuss it. But as trainer, I think I'm also a theorist. So you would have to also differentiate in if you are a coach, if you are a player, and yeah. in certain lives. I, okay, yes, that of course. Makes a lot it's, of sense. Of yes. course, it's it's you can be a different personality as player or as. Book writer, or as a teacher, or as, or as an author. Uh, yeah. or, or you have you can have different styles. I'm I'm mm -hmm. convinced, and for me, for me, I'm 100 convinced. I as a player, I'm an activist, but as a writer or coach, I'm not an. As writer, definitely not. As coach, of course, I. As coach, it's, this is we don't want to go too deeply there. As as coach, of course, I'm still when I'm training with Louis Engel, for example. Maybe one, uh, hopefully, some activist thinks maybe he learned from me, but I don't want to over, you know, state. This is a difficult, murky territory. I don't want to go too deeply there. Sure. But, okay, then let's say, as DVD author or writer, or as player, I have two different things. And one at a time, I'm an activist, and in the other, I'm a serious. And in German, by the way, it could also be called dogmatica or systematica or wissenschaftler. That would be dogmatic uh. or systematic or... Scientist. scientist and this would also not be bad because it, this is a bit difficult to translate to German an English theorist is very very good yeah. a bit better than German theoretica because in German you would think opening theory it would be opening theoretician but, that but that's not it yeah. but that's not it theorist is not opening theoretician it, as we have already seen it's something different mm -hmm. Is it more like a person who is experimenting more? Uh, let's see what it is. What yeah, he is. let's see. Okay. Yeah. Um, now I'm curious, actually. Yeah. You can see chess as a concrete game and concrete only calculation uh, variations. Yeah. Then you are uh, pragmatic. Yeah. Also, then you are an alpha beta engine taking the evaluation function as given. Exactly. The oh. link is below, by the way. We have all the other episodes uh, just below if you haven't watched them yet. Or you can you can always um, make uh, general theories about it. Okay. These theories can be very general. Like for example, you should always maximize your own move options. So the, your flexibility. There is uh, the Opferman. We don't want to go there, but there is the Opferman uh, theory, which uh, 
only goes like this, that you in all moves you should maximize the difference between your own move options and these of the opponents and the central squares are valued more holler. Okay, this it does work, of course, but it is one possible theory to, according to which you could play chess. You would be okay. a weak player, but you could do it. <laughs> you, would, you would be a theorist. Your elo would be, wouldn't be very high, but you could play like that. I see. Okay, okay, okay. This, okay. Yeah, in, okay, this, we don't want to go, but one thing is, of course, you could potentially generate candidate moves like this. Which uh, candidate moves uh -huh. maximizes your own move options or maximizes the difference between your options and the opponent options? This you could do. I don't advise that, but this would be one way to make use of this theory. Okay. And this is a thing of, the, the important thing, of course, probably is to get from all theories the best things for you. I but see. But you can't, okay. If you follow Nimtsovich or if you follow Alexander Bangiev or Dorfman, you can do it. But if you follow it word by word, it won't work. This is one of the big secrets of the royal game. There are many theories. Many authors have written thousands of books with many theories. The system, my system, the method in chess, my method, Felder Strategie, and this yeah. would go on forever. You can't take one single book and one single theory and then you will be world champion. No, it won't work. Yeah, we can all agree with that. Absolutely. The big secret of the royal game is that this doesn't work. <laughs> yes, very Yeah, but there are, there are other kinds of mathematics or other things where it works. Mm -hmm. You have subjects of mathematics and you can answer all questions by one theory. It works in Galois theory. For, we don't want to go there, but there are areas of science where this will work. Mm -hmm. But chess is not one of them. <laughs> and I think this is one of the interesting features of the royal game where it differentiates it from... In a way, we could also say chess is a sub-subject of mathematics. Yeah. It's a finite game. We could make table bases and it's a but we can't make general theories. Okay. Like, at least not now. Okay, it it could be possible, but humanity has not managed so far. Okay. Yeah, I think I understand and I think we can all agree with that. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So so far so good. So there are very different uh, theorists uh, of course. Often of course and we will uh, in Lewis and I so the, you you could have now have hundreds of different theorists. You sure, could follow yes. whatever you want. You could maximize the move options, you could follow Nimsovich my system, you could follow Dorfman's the method in chess. Certain you. strategies, certain grandmasters you can follow, you, you name it. You can make your own general theory and then you follow. You can go after this book all the time. You, you, you can make your own theory <laughs> and always follow that, uh, you, you name it. And we can't, this we can't now make here in this show. Fair so enough. So we have to be a bit more special. Okay. And then, of course, usually the theories come with, from the pawn structure. Uh -huh. The pawn structure, of course, will be the defining moment of the theory. That you have to explain, please. Yeah, but the, the pawns are the soul of chess. And uh, are, uh, is it a blocked pawn structure? Is it fluid? Which levels uh -huh. do we have? And then most of these theories come major, with ma not all and not only, but most with major parts will come from the pawn structure. And so we okay. will now look at theories with which usually come from these pawn structure questions. Okay. This is not forced, but it makes a lot of sense to do it. Okay. Good. And I if like we that. look at Steinitz, Botvinnik, Kramnik, Nemtsovich, Arnish Giri, Ulf Anderson, it will come from the pawn structure. Hmm. So it makes sense to be more special. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so they are usually, of course, very good. Uh, if, yeah. They know their structures by heart. They play openings following... Uh, their structure, they mm -hmm. then also know, like French is a typical theorist openings and Volga, uh, Benkel Gambit and typical Sicilian endgames or whatever, and King's Indian they like openings where the pawn structure is very concrete given and stays for the middle game and even the end game oh, theorists like this a lot okay. the French, for example the French is a typical theorist opening we then have Bordwinnik um, yeah, and uh, Georg Meyer, this is Rubinstein, and mm -hmm. many other, and the London system, of course. Also, they, whenever we have this system of things, okay, the London system so also is a typical almost, series opening. Almost every opening which has a system in the name already tends to, to be a series opening. Gotcha, you name it. But mm. the other players can learn here, and I don't say that system opening can only be placed by series. This is, of course, not it. 
No, no, of course. You, this is what we can learn from the theorist. We can take their system openings and if he, if it fits and play them. Yeah. And learn from them how we should play them. Mm -hmm. This we can learn from the theorists, for example. Mm, okay. Okay, and they know their structures inside out and often they then play also their structures with both colors like Marachi, Tivyakov or other players. And often theorists also can play their structures from some point on with both colors. They know all modes by both sides by heart and it doesn't matter if they are white or black as long as their structure they can play it. What happens if the... I don't want to get into this too deep already, but what happens if an opponent destroys the structure right from the beginning or doesn't let the structure happen? Is this something which a theorist hates? Yes. Okay, good. Of course. <laughs> I like to play <laughs> the, the, against the, theorists. The theorist, of course, hates <laughs> nothing more like that, of course. Yeah, of course. So, so it's, not a, and, it's, it's relatively easy. And, their strengths. The theorists I, know their structures okay. inside out. They know all planes and motives. They have a sharp intuition how to use it in their structures. In their structures, they are extremely strong. Their systems are stable and can use long term. Like uh, Kramnik shows uh, the Berlin endgame against Kasparov. This was big cho the winning choice mm. in, a, in a way. And Kasparov banged his head against the, the Berlin wall and until his head broke. <laughs> the wall was is still standing. Yeah. And um, yeah, they are good in many are also very good in theoretical endgames. They know the Redkins end endgame manual by heart, all and all all examples and by heart. This is usually also one strength of theorists. Okay. And yeah, and they, they also play often logically and systematically. I don't believe all of Bonvinnik's annotations, but if you follow them, and, and Bonvinnik was a dogmatic. He, 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 in a way, was the dogma itself. Hmm. And also in life and in, also in life and in his communication with the communist leaders and everything, he was not dogmatic. He was the dogma itself. <laughs> oh my God. So when he had an opinion, it could It, you could be the leader of your communist party of the state or whatever. You could, you could be who or whatever you want. It couldn't be changed by nobody. Okay. If it, it was the dogma itself. He never signed. So he never signed these joint letters. So the party allowed him to. Everybody wrote this letter in the cultural case. But he was allowed to write his own letter. Hmm. Because he never can sign joint letters. Because he, his <laughs> It's theory is his. the truth. And when there are words by others, you know, he can't sign it. And then the Communist Party said, gave in and said, okay, Mr. Berwinnick, for you and only you, we make one big exception. Because you are allowed the to write your own. Yeah, the, I think the leader thought that here, you know, is a problem that is not so, you can, if you, yeah, here's mm -hmm. a problem you must be a bit flexible. And they found the big solution that he was allowed to write his own letter himself quite clever after now the communist yeah. party leaders <laughs> made a very clever decision here because they knew that they could say whatever that they, could, they will do it won't what, help whatever they will do they can't force hmm. him to sign it because he can never sign it and then they can't force him it's a stalemate then so he is not only dogmatic he now is it, the, the dogma now itself. it gets complicated now Can I say that theorists might tend to be a bit more hard-headed? Um, there are weaknesses of theorists. Theorists yeah. often stick to their principles even when they don't fit the, the, to the position and they are not so flexible. They always want to apply their theory and, uh, and that's, that's it. They don't... Okay, this is, but okay, they are not all are that dogmatic like... Sure, of course. Of course. But, uh, so is it more difficult to understand that you might be a theorist? Well, as a, a book right? as, as book author and writer, in a way I'm a theorist and I also in that case have some principles and you the bishop pair is good for example and if you want to convince me that the bishop pair is not good <laughs> then I have, you have to show it. Uh, then I then yeah, might be complete examples but matter. basically the bishop pair is <laughs> in, in a certain, I'm not as Bodvinnik as Mikhail Borsevich Bodvinnik, I would say. Gotcha. And I don't want to say about joining this uh, signing this letter. I, uh, uh, whatever. You, you We are don't a bit want more to, flexible. I'm, I'm but slightly you don't have to sign any letters. more flexible than Bodvinnik, but it is impossible to be less flexible. So this doesn't, you know, say much. But if somebody will uh, challenge you to go like, no, two knights are better than two bishops, that game is a loss already. I have some certain kind of 
principles. But of course, uh, yeah, I'm also a bit flexible. I I, I agree. You are definitely. Otherwise, we couldn't even make that show. Trust me with that. We can. <laughs> yeah, usually with my co-authors, with you, I <laughs> often reach compro Com yes. So I'm a bit more flexible than Mikhail Mosevich. Slightly more flexible. So, and you're just naming, of course, very extreme cases here yeah, to course. make a point. Yeah. Of course, of course. Of course. Uh, yeah. Nimtsovich, in the writings, they are very dogmatic. My writings are a bit less dogmatic. <laughs> I agree. Slightly yes. less dogmatic. <laughs> but they have these. I always want to make some guidelines and some principles. And my writings do have this. Definitely. So, as in this respect, I am a theorist, I think. And here's the book. But okay, this is always, of, of, of course, this is of slightly murky theory. It's like a murky territory. Fair enough. We are a bit over the bound, the strong scientific boundaries of Lars Bohansen's model. Yes, and you're showing a point, and that's why this is mentioned. I think it's good. Keep on. Okay, so, yeah, these are the... And so, yeah, and how... Okay, how... Uh, you should play against theorists. You should try to use their inflexibility. You should br bring them out of the structures, like you said. Mm. And sometimes they have very bad scores. And then you should play the opening again. Prepare that. Sometimes <laughs> if uh, uh, a player has zero out of five and still continues it, the player is most likely a theorist. All other t player types would say, okay, this is not my game. I score badly. I play another opening. A theory would, would say, no, the, the opening is good. It's just I blunder later. So I play, play, and play, and then I have zero out of ten. Doesn't matter. It's not the opening. It's my theory. The theory must be correct. I play, play, play. I have that in me too. Okay, but... Yeah, okay, but okay, so, so it's not... Uh, <laughs> maybe in that respect, then you are also have some... some, have inflexi some, some you have some inflexibility yeah. there, but I don't... It's, this is a bit murky theory to Yeah, territory. sure, sure, sure. Um, but it's good to think about it. That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah, that's in a way the point of all, all, all yes. this. Okay, yeah, and... Um, so then for activists, you can study the first match Tal against uh, Bodvinik or the match Arnand against Kramnik. It shows the value of opening novelties where Kramnik was brought out of his mainstream uh -huh. theory uh, and didn't manage to deal with the resulting the dynamic chaos Arnand managed to create with his black <laughs> games. And yeah, typical theorist openings, uh, Berlin Wall, Kramnik, French is of course a typical, as we already mentioned, French Rubinstein, Georg Meyer, Queen's Gambit with Bord Winnings, Pawn Roller, F3, E4, uh, Four Knox, London System, Stone Wall is a typical theorist opening, uh, Accelerated Dragon, Marocci Structures with both colors, Sveshnikov. Mm -hmm. These are all typical theorist openings where the structure is already. In, given in the opening, uh, defining in the opening. Cool. Very interesting. Shall we take a look at an example? Yes. Let's do that. So that is one of, I mean, the ultimate William Steinitz, a theorist. And he is black and he has his... So which opening was this, if I may ask? Do you know? I don't know. Okay, good. Fair enough. But you can see... so. Okay, can I lean out of the window a tiny bit more? Do theorists like to play fianchetto a bit more often, or depending on the on their okay. depending on their with theorists, this is a bit more depending on their series and the opening, of course. Yeah, and it, okay, it, it was a little bit too far fetched. So here is yeah. black to play, and can you make a typical theorist move here even? If uh, is... this, th I, um, there are many series, of course, and many series, <laughs> but. This is one of the series I find most convincing, the Steinitian method of restriction. Stein is introduced. He is also, in a way, found the forefather of the scientific method in chess and all these writings. Yes. Uh, founded, in a way, certain kind of way, the positional school. And I think this is one of the big contributions and one of the very convincing series, which are also Alpha Zero and so on. The bishop pair is good. And this is especially a theory of the two bishops against bishop and knight. Theories often like uh, to coin terms. And here I want to mm -hmm. coin the unopposed bishops, want to call the green bishop. The bishop of the bishop pair, which has no counterpart, I want to call green bishop. And then my guideline of the theory is the green bishop should be as strong as possible. Because the reasoning is this is a piece, mm -hmm. you know, I'm as, as trainer or author, it's like a mathematical theory now. Yes. Yeah? We are coining terms and then making guidelines which are slightly like mathematical, not like mathematical rules, but go into the direction. I see. Interesting. Okay. The green bishop should be made as strong as possible. 
Okay, so let's make him as strong as possible. Let's go to... Okay, but first the rooks, the, the bishop is... We will see. And the pawn, this is a ma of handing... too quick. Uh, yeah, you're too quick. It's handing the pawns. Just one thing, this would be a very big mistake because now the structure is broken while it's activated. And for example, white has more influence on the c5 square than we have now. And this would be a big mistake. Big, big mistake. Okay, so we don't play that. We profit from the fluid pawn structure and from the initiative. Okay. Because we, in a way, we also, to apply the theory, we need to know when, where is the area of application of the yes. theory. We also have a feeling to uh, develop for that. Okay, okay. And these are the necessary preconditions for the theory to work for you. Okay, everybody's activated. Rock takes E3 is threatened. What now? And now comes the real part of the how to restrict White's minor, minor pieces by the Steinitzian method of restriction. Well, we play B6. And our aim is to put all our pawns to dark squares. To restrict this bishop to the maximum, we want to have this. Oh. And this restricts this bishop to the maximum and the green bishop is as strong as possible because no of our pawns is in its way. It is firing free through our lines. Interesting. Chess, you know, is an easy game. You have one theory, the, the Steinitz and Messerer's restriction. You follow it and you win. Chess is an easy game. If the preconditions of your theory are fulfilled, of course. If they are met, exactly, yeah. Here they are met because I chose the example. <laughs> and That was it's clever. A, and, it's a good, <laughs> and it's a good theory in my opinion. This yes. is why I chose this theory as example theory. But all these other uh, Dorfman method, others, they are not bad. It's just important for you to know when and how to apply. There are many of yes. these theories... And the big secret of the game on you is when and how to apply which one. This is the big, big secret of the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is not so easy if I don't select the examples for you. Definitely not. You have to your positions on the board and then you, it works or it doesn't work. And I, the, uh, this was very helpful, I know. <laughs> okay. Okay, here comes yet the big, big, big moment. Okay. White must play the right move here or... Everything is to Yeah, but what here here is a big 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 moment. What should English have played uh, here? Bertolt English, I actually have never heard of him. So what about uh, Bishop D4? This is a mistake. Oh no. Then I play F6. Uh, I follow my plan. Oh. And next move will be C5, and then two more. Yeah, then oh, and then you will like lose uh, most likely similar okay. to the game. Okay, good. Then we activate one of our rooks, maybe. No, then I play c5 and you lose similar to the game. You must do something against c5 or you will be restricted too strongly. Uh -huh. Well, um, something against c5. Yes. How can we stop that? Yeah, you can't, stop, you can't stop it, but you must stop that it dominates every... What is your worst piece and it must stop? You must stop the knight. It goes to d4. You name it. This is the only move. Just took me four tries here. Yeah. <laughs> this is the only move. Because if the knight is dominated, then, yeah, well, nice to meet you. Then it's dominated. I see. And then the bishop are, are stronger than the dominated knight because the knight is dominated. Yeah. Okay, okay. Chess, okay, okay. you guessed it. With hindsight, chess is a very easy game and probably you can also all explain all games by series. But the problem is the hindsight part of it. Yeah. And don't take all of Botvinnik's notes for given. Many of them are, of course, written with hindsight. And as, as trainer, it's a big advantage that I can use that and... Yeah, I don't have to use foresight. Okay. But this is the only move. And now it's now black is better, clear, but now the domination part is stopped. And for example, here it's not so clear. The difference is now the knight is now the knight is now playing, and it's a big difference to the game. In the game, the knight will be destroyed. And then eaten alive by the bishops. Not nice. Okay. C5. F6. G5, putting, uh, okay, activating the king and now yes. putting everybody to the dark space. This is so funny because, of course, there's this other theory by Capablanca, putting them on the other squares. But in this case, it just makes a lot more sense. 
Yeah, because I just here, wanted to mention it. Yeah, of course. Because I learned it. Often in chess is you have for the one strategy, one theory for the other, another theory. <laughs> yes, exactly. And they compete with each other and you have to find which one is. This is one of the secrets of chess. Yes. Thank you. Another pawn to the dark square, planning this here and this here. Chess is an easy game. Super easy. Super easy. This is the first move where Just he had... To, hard for, to master. This is the first move which is um, committal. All these other moves are not very committal. But here Steinitz weakens a dark... Here, this is the reason why A5 would also be... Here, um, here he had to... This is a committal move because it weakens a dark square forever. True. An important central dark square and forever. But you said that makes sense. Now. It doesn't matter because uh, here the theory is a weakness which cannot be exploited is no weakness. Well, it here. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, chess is an easy game. Okay, this is a mistake here. Knight d2 is much, much better. The knight must be regrouped. This is another big mistake. Now, because now the knight has to go to oh, c1. Oh, wow. Slowly pushing forward. Another mistake. Knight d2 would be more tenacious. What now? Now Steinitz played actually. Be oh, Steinitz is very wow. played best here. How did Steinitz convert here? Um, and here we have another thing. This bishop could be called chameleon bishop. <laughs> it's a it's a potentially bad bishop. I want to coin the term, which has good functions for the position series, like these. Terms and I want to. Uh, this was introduced by Excess uh, by Espen Lund. He Espen called this double edged bishop, but I like chameleon bishop even more. And then the guideline is the way the chameleon changes its color, the evaluation of the position changes. When it gets a bad bishop, we are losing. When it gets a good bishop, yeah, we equalize or we win. Okay. And often these these bishops they are better than they look. It looks like a bad bishop, but yes. it's a it's a it's Chame actually not that bad. It's a chameleon bishop. So what to do with black? Uh, but this was a big hint for you. Yeah, of course. So we try to exchange it maybe with... We uh, exchange yeah. it and we win and we go to a Fischer endgame. Of course, <laughs> Steinitz didn't know that it will be called Fischer. But Theor <laughs> I want, But you, you guess why I'm thinking that I'm a theorist as trainer. I coin term after term. Yes. And this speaks for theorist. I see. But this was not coined by me. I am um, uh, Fisher Endgame was already known. Yes. And here Steinitz now had a winning Fisher Endgame, but it wasn't called uh, in 1883. It wasn't called Fisher Endgame. That would have been very strange. It was be called Endgame is Rook and Bishop against Rook and Knight, where the Bishop has the advantage. But this is you know Fisher Endgame is uh, easier to pronounce, goes quicker. Yeah, and people get it. This loses directly, but we are losing in all cases. And here now Stein, it's oh, wind. Just by depends. Now the only winning move is... Oh, uh, uh, King G6? E, e, nine. The, then, then I have... King E5, I meant. Yeah, of course. <sighs> no, King G6, uh, then Knight E2 is a draw. You have to play... I cannot take, no. Because oh you cannot take. Gosh. Yeah, because you yeah you can take, but... Yeah, I thought I can just take the knight. No, no, you cannot, you cannot take. So, yeah, yeah you, you have to go here, because now you can take. This is king e5 was oh. the only winning move. And by the way, here you make a direct switchback. You played king f6, e5, and you go directly take the move back. Okay, study okay, like okay. For every okay. study would be improved by a direct switchback, but here it's a game position. Only winning move king e5 because now you can take and now the difference is the king is more active and now then it's a question what is more important that it has to be calculated of course the outside pass pawn or the more active king and here as you guessed the more active king is more important and English resigned. Yeah and um, I like this a lot because I think the Steinitzen method of restriction is one of the best theories the theorist invented. Mm -hmm. It is a theory for the bishop pair against Bishop and knight. The guideline is a green bishop should be made as strong as possible. Now we know. You should restrict the enemy knight more and more. And of course, you need some preconditions. Uh, probably, yeah, uh, you should. It is good if you have an initiative and the enemy knight has no real prospects. That would be ideal, exactly. Then we have the preconditions for the theory fulfilled. And I like this. Um, a lot. There are, of course, countlessly more series. You can't look at them all, and it's a series. At the DVD, we go a bit deeper. But 
The real secret of the Royal Game is not there's one theory and you learn it by heart and then you repeat it every morning in front of the mirror. The real secret is that there is no really good general theory for all positions. All theories have their area of application and their exceptions and often the real secret is to find the exceptions and not the rule cases. This is actually a, a lesson for life and yeah, it couldn't be more accurate for the chess life that we all love so much. And um, yeah, now I would even say that in all of us is a little tiny bit of a theorist a theorist because we all stick to our certain openings of some kind. We learned them. We want to play them. We like those kind of positions, those kind of positions, these kind of structures, these kind of sacrifices. So even all the player types have a tiny hint of a theorist. Uh, I can definitely find it in my own play as well, although I am the ultra activist after all. We see each other next week and we have a couple of uh, unsolved questions which I would like to ask Carsten about the four player types. All the links for the shows are below. Of course, the Fritz Trainer is available. And uh, if you like to read the book, read the book. And if you are a theorist, a pragmatic uh, activist or... Um, what was the last one? My gosh, the reflector. Refle you get both, of course. <laughs> see you next time. See you.